Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach Friday Morning Mastermind. Uh, as the, the two hosts of the call are myself and Todd Bookspan. Todd, welcome to the call, my friend. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Right on. And, and you know, last year we had a couple folks come through the program as students who really have graduated to, to leaders. You know, they're, you know, I hope at some point if, they're, if they've got the bandwidth and willing, they can actually host one of these calls. But for today, they're going to be co-leaders with us. We've got uh, Danny Harani. Danny, welcome as a leader to the, to the Insane Productivity Mastermind call. Good morning, everybody. Good. And Michelle Town. Michelle, welcome to the call, and thanks for jumping on as a leader. Good morning, everybody. So we are here to have a conversation, you know, as mortgage professionals around insane productivity with a mortgage coach. You know, uh, we've got folks on this call that are brand new to the program. We had um, the Hallmark team signed up, you know, gosh, I don't know what percentage of the company is, but I believe, gosh, I, I, I wanted to say 38, but over 40 of their, of their team, um, not only loan officers and mortgage professionals, but executives, you know, all types of folks within the organization, production professionals that want to get more productive. So for anybody who's on this call from the Hallmark team, welcome. You guys are all just getting started. Uh, we added a whole lot of new, um, you know, members of this program at the kickoff there, and I did a few weeks ago. So we got people brand new, and we've got people that, you know, are going through it for the second and third time. And then, of course, you know, we've got Michelle and Danny. So, um, Todd, I'm going to hand it off to you because you do a great job of keeping collaboration. I know Danny and uh, Michelle have some discussion topics, but why don't you share what you want to share, and then let's, let's get into a mastermind conversation with everybody. Well, no, and I want to reiterate what you said. Right? Welcome to all the new people. It's always great to see so many uh, returning folks who, who've been along for the journey with us as well as, as all you new folks. And super excited to have Danny and Michelle here because, you know, I guess sometimes I get tired of hearing myself talk, so i got to imagine that some of you are, are excited for a fresh perspective as well. And, you know, it's interesting. I'm heading to Del Mar next week with um, 40 leaders in the mortgage industry um, to coach as part of Building Champions Master's Coach Program. And our theme is going to be mindset. Really, it's all around the mindset. You know, we've got CEOs in that group and national sales managers, regional managers, producing branch managers, and, and some pretty rock star producers as well. And uh, so it's really going to be addressing it to them in, uh, you know, in all of their uh, unique positions and how they can, how, how they're approaching mindset and how they're going to be bringing it to their teams. And so I loved it. And, you know, I'm going to call on Michelle right from the start because she, she mentioned it right before we jumped on this call. And. Um, and her mindset. So I'd love, Michelle, for you to come on and kind of give a little bit of a, a, a preview into, into what you were just mentioning. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Todd. Um, so the beginning of the year, it's always renewing your relationships with your realtors, renewing your commitments with your clients. And the number one thing that I work, you know, I, I deal with on an everyday basis is fear. How do I walk through that fear of reaching out to those people, realizing, you know, oh gosh, I haven't talked to that person in six months. Oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm dropping the ball here. Um, I've changed my format so that should not happen again if I do what I'm supposed to be doing. But one of the insane productivity models, modules, and I think it was module one, where Darren talked a little bit about fear and he said something which made me laugh and I actually use it as part of an opening piece to get a new realtor. And what I do is I I, I, before I go in, and I always prep myself and, you know, put my little box on the shelf for a second and then come back to it right before I open and go into my presentation. And I remind myself when I walk in, if these people are not coming to my funeral and going to cry, I don't care. And I, it makes me laugh and it takes all the stress off. And I've actually turned that into a marketing piece for some of the realtors I'm trying to get and when I when they take my call and they say, you know, no thank you, I've got I've got somebody and I and I'll say, well do you mind if I keep calling you because my goal is to have you come to my funeral and cry. And I always and I just started this last week. So I've done this with the last five top people and they stop and they go, excuse me? <laughs> and I go and I and we start laughing and it opens up a conversation and takes away the sales pitch. And I love it. It helps a lot. Well, and I think that's great, right? I mean, I think that we've talked about it a little bit last week. I mean, right now you've either got to be playing offense, 
and going after those new agents or you're playing defense to make sure that, that you're protecting your current agents from uh, those who are going after new agents, you know, certainly it sounds like you're doing a, a little bit of both. Um, and it sounds like they get a pretty good, a pretty good laugh at that. They do, and it, it just it really kind of breaks the ice, and that's what I'm looking for. I, I'm not going in to sales pitch a new realtor. I'm going in to see how I can help. I have built my model, my value proposition, everything that some of you are just starting in same productivity you'll get to in modules five, six, and seven. But my my value and my my motto is we, we truly believe that we want you to come in as clients and leave us family. And I do the same with my realtors. I, I want to work with people who complement and don't complicate. And it's very hard to let those ones go that have been complicating your life. Well, but it's so important, right? You got to, you know, Darren always says you get what you tolerate. So I love to hear that, uh, you know, that you're making a choice that way. One other thing that you said, we always talk about best practices, and you said you've actually figured out how to listen to insane productivity in your car. Correct. So I, I finally figured out how to get the um, sound one. I, I never could figure out how to get the, M, I think it's called the MP3. I couldn't figure out how to get to play in my car. So what I do now is when I get in my car every day after I close my gate, I put on whatever model, module I'm working on and I listen to it. Um, I've already been through the modules, but I'm, I'm, I've decided to go back and re-listen to them as a commitment to this program. It made such a difference for me last year. I mean. I mean, I, the last quarter of my year was so much easier. My life was so much simpler, and I had so much less stress. It was, you don't realize it until you realize that you're sleeping eight hours a day. And I go, wait, how come I'm sleeping eight hours a day when the first half of the year I was sleeping, you know, five or four? And um, I've had a little bit of a life, which has been an incredible eye-opening experience about letting things go. Love it, love it. Any other best practices that you'd love to point out to the group before uh, we, we harass Danny a little bit? Hey, yeah. Hey, real um, quick, real, wait, real quick, Michelle, did I, can you see the screen right now? Did I get your quotes right? I just want to get those in writing and on the, uh, in our Facebook group. Did I, did I get them right? Mm -hmm. Correct, you, you did. Um, so yeah, if they're not going to come to your funeral and aren't going to cry, you don't care. And I don't mean you don't care of them as human beings, but it shouldn't bother you and because you're not going to see these people. And it's very hard to do, but when I say that to myself when I'm walking into that meeting, it, it makes me laugh because I realize how insane it is, that statement. It's like, you're not coming to my funeral and you're not going to cry. Why do I care? And because what is our human nature? Our human nature is to want people to like us, period. And so if I can say that and I make myself laugh, I've taken that extra edge that I always have when I get ready to go to a presentation. I get really amped up and a little bit anxious. It makes me laugh and take that anxiety. So when I walk in, I've actually got a smile on my face because it's the last thing I remember is I look at these people going, they're not coming to my funeral. I don't care. So let's go, let's go for that and do your job. Take the fear away. Hey, hey, Michelle, by the way, we've got a lot of new folks on today's call. Uh, so some folks don't know the kind of production you do. How, remind everyone how many loans you've closed and how many realtor relationships you manage. So um, I um, was very fortunate this year. I have a beautiful um, operations team behind me. We, we did $105 million this year and 245 units. And, and how many, that was a, go ahead. Oh, how many real estate agents relationships do you manage? Um, I manage about 20, I would say, that give me at least one or two deals a year. Um, and I also am um, a big Zillow pro proponent as well, and I like to give out. And um, I don't know if this is the right venue to say it, but last, last year we gave out 37 realtor leads, and we closed 22 of them. So 22 of the realtor relationships are that for the, lens, the loans that I had gotten, I was able to give to my realtor partner referrals, and I gave them to that 20 group. I don't give it to new ones, but that was huge for me this year to be able to measure that. Well, I, I, I just wanted to draw, you know, one, folks that don't know you realize just how successful you are, how many relationships you manage, and, and to me, I think the thing that's so special is that, you know, despite how successful you are, obviously how accomplished and confident you are, 
you still have to remind yourself that, hey, if people aren't um, coming to my funeral, I don't care. And so, I mean, there's folks on this call that, you know, they're, they're not doing near that kind of business. And so they, you know, they, they, they've got an even bigger hill to climb. And so I just think coming from you, that means a lot. Uh, so big topic. And by the way, I, I, I cut you off. I know Todd had asked you anything else and you were getting ready to share something else. I just wanted to make sure that really connected. And the new folks on the call, you know, knowing who you are and how successful you are, I think it just, it means even more. Great. So and I think Todd, you um, what, was that my best, Todd, was it my, what my best practice was, one of my other best practices? Yeah, if there was anything else that you would think, if there was just one or two more things that, that you would say have been impactful for this group of people who are just getting rolling in insane productivity. Um, yes, besides um, Tuesday when Dave Savage caught me multitasking, <laughs> um, I, I really try not to multitask. Um, I, I, I take it to heart when I'm talking to a client, my email is off and my, um, my phone is off. When I go into any presentation, I do not bring in my phone. Um, I do block off, I give myself two hours a day that I can multitask. Um, I, I don't always, I'm not always successful at it, but I'm very conscious and aware of it. And I get more done by not multitasking than I do by multitasking. It's, it's incredible. If you watch it, if you try what Darren says in module, I think it's three, um, that says just try it for a week, I promise you, you will be surprised at the results. Awesome. I think that's great. One other reminder to everyone else that's in this call, you guys can always raise your hand in GoToMeeting or you can post a question in the questions and those questions can be um, to a specific person like Michelle or Danny or Dave or myself or just to the group in general. Um, and then also just know that occasionally, in fact, every call, um, Dave and I do call on people and, and get feedback who have raised their hands and those who haven't. So just be, be prepared. We promise not to, to scare you too bad. Does that sound fair, Dave? That sounds more than fair, Todd. Rock it out. I always think that. All right, so Danny, let's bring Danny on because I think, um, and, and I guess to, to go along with the same route that uh, Michelle just did, because uh, your numbers are pretty astounding um, there at the Gaylord Hansen team, can you bring us up to speed on exactly where you ended up 2016 from a numbers perspective? Yeah, um, so our, our team, and that's super important to kind of know the, the scale of it. So um, the team, uh, you know, All In has about uh, 37 uh, members, um, and I'm one of the, you know, kind of leaders, mentors, coaches, however you want to frame it. And um, All In, we did uh, about 891 units for um, about 375 million, somewhere in Which that neighborhood. Awesome, but 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 you talk to a huge percentage of those clients yourself, correct? Oh, I, I definitely do. And and so but but it's a matter of, you know, it's all about the context of kind of how the whole process gets deconstructed and, and most of my impact on the clients is is just a kind of the upfront relationship building and the majority of my time these days is spent you know, going directly to the agents and, and more kind of a business to business role. Um but I still do I I really it's it's more of a I love talking to clients. That's my, I, I'm really good at it. It's super fun. And so I, I'm almost getting withdrawals from not doing it as often as I, I used to. Um, but yeah, I still definitely talk to a, a huge percentage of the clients, at least at, at some level. Um, but the, the team is definitely the biggest uh, impactor of that, that end of it. Um, and, and that's really kind of along those lines though with, with um, you know, what Michelle's describing at, at it doesn't matter what you're doing in your day. If you if you have a, kind of a goal set out for yourself, like for example, let's say my day is you know maybe 30% taken up by uh, client conversations, and then I apologize for the background noise. Uh, client conversations, but 70% with uh, you know team mentoring or coaching. All the same focuses on no multitasking and and you know being present and really listening, all those same skills apply and you get a ton more leverage out of your time and day if you are focusing on the one thing that you're trying to accomplish instead of letting all the whirlwind of life kind of consume and distract you from getting deep on, on a topic. And I've been, uh, um, if anybody on this call is not a subscriber to the uh, Darren Dailies, uh, um, I would highly recommend doing that. It's an awesome way to start off your day. 
Uh, and one of the things that he's been talking about recently is, you know, stop learning new things. You, you know, and don't, you know, one of them was don't read 37 books. You know, read five books, but just keep reading them. And Insane Productivity is a super, super good um, example of this where one of the best practices I would recommend to anybody who's starting this is when you go through a module, go through it one time, you know, take the notes, but then start over again and go through it again before moving on to the next one. You'll be surprised how uh, how the imp kind of nuanced information there is in there that you miss the first go around. And then you can then use that foundation of kind of getting really deep on each module before moving on to the next one. Um, I always I always tried to get through them at least twice because the first time I was just trying to fill out the, the worksheets and then the second time around I could really kind of sit down and be present. It was almost like the worksheet itself was a multitasking event. Um, but you know, I appreciated the fact that I was still able to you know, kind of go, kind of go back and, and uh, look at those notes. So definitely, um, you know, go go through the information um, multiple times if you can. Um, and from a mindset perspective, I mean, what Michelle said is is awesome. You know, and being able to just recognize the fact that you know what we do is super emotional. And and I've been having to in this past week there was a couple of you know whirlwind fires issues that. Um, reminded me how, how uh, I guess how, uh, per, how I take things super personally, right? And it's very easy to get on the phone and and you know call the agent, have them you know not give you the time of day, and and want to take that personally. But it, it's the the what I've been trying to do, and what I've been trying to encourage our team to do is to to focus on the process versus the result. So if the process is, is you know, hey, I went ahead and I made my you know 30 phone calls today, which I had committed to myself and to the team to do, um, and I, I made all those calls. You can feel, you should feel satisfied with the fact that you followed the process. If the result didn't come in that moment, you don't need to feel uh, a sense of rejection or fear or pain or whatever it is. If you keep following the process, the results will come. And and if you can hone in on that, the emotion comes out of it. And you're no longer kind of getting that energy drain that you that comes with kind of being beat up emotionally. I love that quote. Keep following the process, and the results will come. Because I do think that's one of the beauties of this business, and what I love about this call is we've gotten so much great input from you know great producers like Michelle and Danny and Bliss and some of the other people who are part of this group. And then um, as Dave and I have uh, called out um, others of you who you know may be. Uh, you know what we would you know you might consider yourself a normal producer right doing 20 30 40 million a year or even less you know, we get so much from we get so much from you guys as well so that's really the key with this group is is to have as many voices as possible um, you know speak in and you know certainly from the multitasking perspective Danny I know you said for you that uh, you know staying off your phone in the car was was big would you mind sharing that with the group yeah so uh, and Staying off my phone in the car, it was was not the issue. It was texting and emailing while I was driving um, was the issue. And you know, if you think about that, you know, like kind of going back to that idea, follow the process, and the result will come. Well, the process of driving distracted has one end, right? And that end is disaster. So if and you know, if my process and habit was to expose myself to that kind of you know risk and danger by driving distracted, it's just a it's a bad way to operate, and and um, I, so getting off of text and email while I was driving, I know that probably some people are thinking, hey, that's crazy that you were doing it, and other people are thinking, oh my gosh, there's no way I can stop doing it <laughs> either. Um, I can tell you that it, it, you know, they people will wait for you. You know, people will wait to hear back from you, uh, and you know that that seven or eight minutes while you're driving to your next stop, it's not going to change your life, but. If you're driving distracted, it, it could absolutely change your life for the worse. So that was a big thing for me, and and I wasn't recognizing how much um, kind of latent stress it was causing me to to you know basically look down at my phone, text, and then look up and go, oh my gosh, I was just driving for who knows how long, and didn't recognize how much danger I was putting myself in. So I know that kind of sounds a little bit dramatic, but it, it's a big relief, and and it's not just the action, but the acknowledgement that you uh, you're value is something that people will wait for, not forever, but certainly for a car ride. No, I love that. I think that's such a key thing, and I've shared it before. You know, I made that commitment to literally I put my phone in the back seat, and my daughter was super appreciative, and, and ironically, she's the one who 
continues to this day to still hold me accountable. You know, if I ever hop on my phone at all at a stoplight, then I, I totally I totally hear it from her. So so I love that, and I love the fact that we're continuing to talk about multitasking as an issue. I'd thrown a question out to the Facebook group last week um, with regards to you know one one thing that that people have implemented successfully. And Troy Root, you you got on there and gave a great comment with regards to multitasking. So I'd love to uh, unmute you, which I'm going to do, and uh, bring you in so that you can talk about that for a minute if you hopefully don't mind. How are you doing, Troy? Good job. How about you guys? Doing, doing awesome. So you mind telling us about your multitasking changes? Well, the multitasking is like, you know, one thing I did cut out, I, um, I, one of the first things I did way back yonder was uh, not stop the emailing and texting right away. That was actually easier than I thought. Uh, still do, I still do, the, I, can't, I just can't get myself off the phone. But I caught myself in the office going back to probably like, gosh, about a month ago, during our break, during Christmas time, not focusing on the clients when they're in the office. I was actually having my email up and other little distractions and so forth. And you forget how much um, you unproductive unproductive time it creates. And it's like and, you know, I'm listening. Remind me to think was that you know I felt like a stoner again. I mean, I, back to module one when we talked about. The multitasking, because if you do too much, your IQ drops to, I think you said, what, 10 points, if I remember right? And just yeah. listening to this morning reminded me of that. No, I love that. I love that. So what is your, you know, kind of what's been the silver bullet for you, if there is one, or what things have helped you stop multitasking other than just obviously paying attention to it? It's just constantly, you have to constantly pay attention to it daily. I mean, it's easy to sneak in there. And let it, if you just don't catch it, just permeate it, it can get away from you real quick. Uh, the, but the jam sessions have actually helped me a lot. I mean, like I said in, the, in my post, I mean, I'm only doing about 45 minutes and then I get multitasking again, but that 45 minutes of time is focused. I'm still getting a lot more done than if I multitask it uh, for that 45 minutes. I love it. I appreciate that so much because, again, I, I think for those of you who are new, multitasking was one of the consistent themes throughout almost every call. And then you mentioned probably the other one, I think, that was one of the top three that we talked about a lot, which were jam sessions. Do you mind um, sharing? It's a module three or module two concept. Um, do you mind sharing with, I think most people on the call are probably the module two, but, two, but do you mind talking about, can you give us a quick definition to you what a jam session is? A jam session is just a I, he says 90 minutes, but I'm I'm in, I'm at 45. But during that time, you just get rid of everything, shut everything down. I shut my cell phone down or put it away. Um, I shut my emails down. And it's just focused time on one specific priority or one specific task with uh, no interruptions whatsoever. And that way, you just you give it your all your whole focus, and and that is your only focus. For that for that time period of time, and I know past we talked about and I've done myself retweaking systems or or working on a file that trying to put a fire on a fire out on a file. It's just when you focus on during that time period, you get it done, and usually I get done in that forty five minute period. Well, I think that's good. I think for for most people, I think they're all different uh, different shapes and sizes. Exactly. Of, of jam sessions, I know, Dave. Dave, did you say that you were you start off with twenty minute jam sessions? Is that still your is that still your standard at this point? You no, know, it's. I mean, there's no doubt that there are jam sessions that I have that I, I I'm not afraid to schedule a twenty minute, thirty minute jam session. Again, folks, you know, I am the real ADD guy. You know, I mean, I was the kid that took Ritalin in sixth grade, and it's you know we live in an ADD society, but you know, I'm I'm the real deal. So I, I did find it super hard to do 90 minutes. Well, no, I found it impossible to do 90 minutes. And it was such a high bar for me personally. I, I started off with 20-minute uh, sessions. And, and, but I, I would tell you, I mean, I'm up to 45 minutes. Uh, it, it's just so far I have not built either the discipline or maybe it's just not how I'm wired to be able to do 90 minutes. That's just, just you know, it's too painful. And I'll never even start if I try to set that expectation for myself. 
So, um, but I mean, the, the big takeaway, and Darren does such a great job in the first three sessions of, you know, he, he, he built my belief that multitasking is not more efficient. I mean, there was a time where I thought I was just the world's best, and he really, you know, he, he convinced me that, no, I, I, need to, I need to do deeper work, I need to quit switching, I'll be more productive, and, and so Todd, long answer, but uh, I have built my, uh, my focus muscles up, but they still have a long way to go. Well, no, and I, and I love that. It's, you know, it's interesting because I, I used to be a 60-minute guy. You're right. I mean, there's no way. If I thought I could do 90 minutes, I was just too scared to, I was just too scared to start. But, you know, it's funny. I took some inspiration from you because in the coach's chair now, oftentimes I only have a 30-minute break, and I might need to spend 10 minutes reviewing some documents before an upcoming call. So sometimes I've only got 20 minutes. Um, but because I keep a, a folder still of my on-time material, um, my daughter was super impressed. I got a label maker, and so she made it. She labeled it Todd's Book of Secrets. Um, so I actually have a book of secrets now. That's my on-time jam session book, but I just know right where to go. So when I only have 15, 20 minutes, I can jump on. I can pick out a task that I know will take that amount of time and, and give it 100% to, to get through it. And I think some of this stuff sounds basic. You know, I mean, Danny's saying, yeah, it may sound embarrassing, that I, you know, texting and emailing, driving. It's basic, but, you know, a huge percentage of the people on this call probably do it. Um, you know, Troy talked about being present for, clients and not multitasking when they're there, right? I mean, you know, probably three quarters of you are looking at your email while you're on this call, and so you're multitasking as well. And and, and I think that these are all things that we do, and, and it's, you know, isn't that whole, isn't that like the first step of, you know, any of these types of programs is you got to admit you have a problem, right? Darren talks about that. Um, I mean, do you still find yourself, Dave, falling back into some of the bad habits? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, every, every, I mean, I'm not perfect every day. No, I don't even know that I've had a day where I, I wasn't switching or wasn't multitasking in a way that was not serving insane productivity. So, um, but I, I do know that I'm I'm better, and I do know that I I have you know really pure um, jam sessions. I know I schedule it. I know I'm more productive, but I have not I have not cracked the code. I don't know that I ever will. But I, I know I'm just I just I focus on getting better every day, every week, every month. And that's one of the reasons why I continue to lead these uh, these mastermind sessions. Um, hey, hey Todd, if I could, I want to you know one thing I from some questions I'm getting, some in the system and some outside the system. I do want to set the table for folks that are new to these uh, mastermind calls. You know, you, you're on you're in Darren's program, so it's a it's it's designed to be an all encompassing program that doesn't even have this call. You know, this was a something value add that Todd and I did. So for anybody that's brand new to this call, because we do have Todd a number of people that are just like, this is the first time they're on the call, realize you've got to jump in and do the weekly program. That is the program. This call is is here to provide a level of accountability to keep you in the system and to give you a place where you can just jump on a call every Friday at nine o'clock and listen to people that are all on your same journey of improvement. You know, everybody on this call has spent you know thousand dollars to be a a super insanely productive with mortgage coach and Darren, and so we all have the same thing. We're all in the mortgage business. Um, so if you do have questions, post those in the Q and A section of the Go to Webinar Control Panel. There is a Q and A place, and we do have a question in here, by the way, Todd. Um, anyways, I didn't want to interrupt your train of thought, but I did want to make sure I gave some context to the folks that are on their literally very first call. Also, I want to remind you that we've recorded these, and I, I'm proud to say because I've done a lot of, I've created a lot of training content, and these calls, every single one of them is among the best training calls I've ever done uh, or been part of. You know, I don't want to say I've done because I'm just the guy that you know, is organizing the party. So if you type in recording, you can, you know, scroll through these. And as you can see, we're on a, we're on week 19. This will be the 19th week we've, we've had one of these mastermind calls. And I can almost promise you that you can go back and, you know, if you just want to get better and learn, you can go back and listen to any of these and it would be among the best training calls you've ever listened to. They're really, really good um, training for mortgage professionals. So uh, anyways, a little bit of house cleaning for the new folks. Todd, I'll let you take over and, and do want to just remind you we do have a question from Tony Poe and hopefully we'll see more questions from other folks. 
Yeah, so Tony's question is for you, Michelle. He just wants to know if you can, if we can send out your exact question that you use um, when calling on Realtors. I'm sure that uh, if that may be something, if you don't mind jumping into the Facebook page and typing out and maybe throwing up there your document you're sharing with them. I'm sure that other people made note of that as well. Does that seem fair? Absolutely. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So this is this is that that point of the call too, where um, many of you are thinking, "Gosh, I really hope they don't call on me." Um, and you know, I can I can tell you that looking at the the list of attendees, you know, it's probably split fifty fifty between people from that are returning who've been part of those previous nineteen uh, calls that that Dave mentioned, and then um, a lot of you are brand new from two thousand seventeen. So that's that's great. Um, love seeing that. I've seen a couple people post in there that you don't have access to the secret Facebook group. So if you don't, uh, email, that's just email you, Dave, Dave at mortgagecoach.com. Uh, yeah. And by the way, anybody who's you know not getting the Facebook page, you can also just message me within Facebook. Um, I did have one person, Michael O'Connor, has asked, and by Michael, you've been invited, so it's something in your system. But I've, I've definitely invited you and if I type in your name, you know, you can see it on the screen right here, uh, it will even say that you've been um, invited. So uh, FYI. Look at that. See? Dave and this technology, I think that's I think that's awesome. So I'm just taking a quick look. I don't see any hands yet, so I'm thinking Dave, we probably need to uh, to call on someone. You have any uh, any suggestions of someone that you're dying to hear from? Uh, we haven't heard from Br Bliss for a long time. Bliss, you have been unmuted. Uh, any any questions or comments? Oh, hey, thanks, Dave. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, no, I just love listening to it. You know, it gets crazy busy, and then I miss a few calls, and then I just need maybe a little kick in the pants to keep myself focused. I think one of the things that I'm committed to is to re-listen to all the modules because I know I pick. I kind of cherry picked what I wanted to do and what was easy to implement the first time. And it made a huge difference for sure. But now I want to go back and kind of go a little bit deeper to kind of take it to that next level. Love it. Well, if you have a question or you want to bring something in, please bring it. And Liz, it was, it was great, all the value you brought in the first time through. And uh, congratulations to you and your team on your new online presence. Uh, I, I track a lot of mortgage professionals, and the way you are telling your story online, I think, is special and uh, a good bar for a lot of folks. If you wouldn't mind, just you know, since we do have so many new folks, uh, you know, put a post in our Facebook group with a link to your your website, and you know, just let everybody know what you did and why you did it. I think uh, I think it's inspirational. It will help yeah, people. Yeah, because a lot of it was. Um, I don't know about inspired by insane productivity because I've had the ideas for a long time, but insane productivity kind of gave me the framework to actually accomplish all of the ideas. And I, well, I don't know if I'm accomplished yet, but to actually work on them, even when you feel overwhelmed and you've got a lot going, and you have to balance that. I need to, lo to work on loans and problems. And I need to get new business, but I also need to be marketing for future business. So you've always got those balls up in the air. And so, yeah, it had a huge impact on me. So I'll put a post in there for everybody so they can take a look kind of at what I've done. Yeah, I know. That would be, that'd be great, Bliss. Really appreciate it. Well, I'm going to put you back on mute. Jump back in if you want to ask a okay. question or share something. You know, I want to unmute Chrissy Buchanan. Chrissy is the leader, one of the leaders of Hallmark. And Chrissy, I know you, how many of your mortgage professionals and executives have signed up for Insane Productivity from Hallmark Mortgage? Chrissy? All right, we'll put Chrissy back on mute. Uh, Chrissy, if you do jump back in, let us know. But I wanted to hear where you were coming from. Um, Don Robinson. Don, you have been unmuted. I don't know if you can speak in. Are you there, Don? Going once, going twice, Don? All right. So folks, you know, be ready. You never know when Todd and I are going to bring you into the conversation. I, I always know Mark Thompson. One knows how to connect 
two is present and three always has something brilliant to share. Do you have a question, Mark, or a success story you'd like to share? Well, Dave, no, no pressure at all with that introduction. <laughs> right? Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Happy 2017. Um, I guess, uh, once again, I, I mean, I always enjoy uh, listening to these calls, getting a little bit. Um, I, too, in the process of kind of going to the, uh, to the program uh, for the second time. It's kind of interesting as I'm listening to it now for some of these sessions two, three times, uh, every time I'm getting something out of it. Um, but as with all things in life, you know, it's funny how we sometimes get back into our own patterns. And in one of the sessions and, and modules that I, I, that I, and I think it's one of the first two, is that, you know, shedding off the noise. Um, and with the uh, recent political situations and what's going on in the world, I found myself kind of getting back into the, being the news junkie, wanting to find out, you know, what crazy decisions are being made today. And then last night, all of a sudden, I realized, oh, my gosh, look at what I'm doing. i got to shut the noise off. So I went back to my phone, to my computer, shut off all the notifications, and I said, done, over with. I don't want to see this all throughout my day. So um, I think that was something that I really found to be incredibly powerful and uh, kind of fell into my old patterns, but acknowledged it and then moved forward onto something else. I think that's so huge, too, because, you know, I've done the same thing, right? I, I shut off every notification I have, and I've totally stayed out of all the political Mumbo jumbo. Ironically, it's kept me off Facebook a lot recently, just because you know every time I, I get on there, I seem to get sucked into you know reading somebody's political opinion. The only place left I see it is in my office when I walk down the long hallway to use the restroom. There's a TV on the wall, and it always has some CNN quote going. And so now I've just decided that I'm going to look down when I go through there. I, I normally am looking up because I always run into people I know when I'm walking that way. But even just a little piece, it just takes you off your game, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But part. Put cartoons on in the lobby. You know, unfortunately, it's the building uh, TV, but you know that's a good suggestion. I'll see if they're interested. <laughs> what What else have you found on your second time through insane productivity that you missed the first time through? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's kind of reaffirming what um, what I was doing and got away from, but now getting back into uh, jam sessions are um, officially back on my schedule for this year. You know, my minimum right now that I'm trying to implement is three per week. Uh, my goal is to get up to five, but I'm happy if I can do uh, the next two weeks and three. Um, and then I've got um, another one is my vital few, understanding what it is that I'm going to be focusing in on. And, and Todd, you and I have spoken about this. And, and for me, it's about prospecting. Two, it's about solving problems and leveraging a total cost of ownership through Mortgage Coach. And three is adding value to the lives of others. So as I'm kind of going through these modules and I'm kind of realizing, you know, what are the three things that I'm focusing on? You know, I've got my, I've got it written on my computer screen, you know, in a little, uh, you know, little thumb note there, and it says this is what I'm focusing on. So when I'm about to do something, I look at that, realizing that am I doing one of my vital prospect or one of my vital few? And if I'm not, then I have to realize what do I need to get back into it. And if I am, I'm going okay. This is exactly what I need to be doing at this time. Well, and I think that's key, and for those of you who are new, I mean, Darren's going to talk about that um, as you get a little bit further in, but you'll see that's probably, in addition to jam sessions and multitasking, um, Vital Few is one of the other top five topics that we discussed, and, you know, I know Bliss had even said that was your number one thing that you've implemented. Um, I, think that's, I think that's great. So when you talk about prospecting, I know that that's such a hot topic right now. Michelle shared a little bit about what she's doing. What, what strategies are you doing to prospect for Realtors in in 2017. Yeah, I. Um, gosh, what am I doing? It sounds crazy, but I'm actually calling people, and I'm actually going through offices. Um, I've implemented Cindy Ertman's uh, five-week strategy. Thank you, Cindy, if you're on the call, um, and have been doing that five-week process. I've targeted um, a select group of real estate agents who I want to do business with. Maybe um, I haven't in the past and haven't in a while. Um, so I've implemented that. And uh, right now, I'm, my goal, it sounds crazy, but I'm, I'm really trying to target at least 12 to 15 hours a week of just pure prospecting. And that's a lot. Um, realistically, I'm probably doing maybe five or six. Uh, but I really want to get up to be doing more. Well, I think that's key, right? I mean, I think, I think prospecting right now is, is key because if, if you're not doing it, then it's going to be hard to grow. What, what percentage of your business last year was refinance versus purchase, and how important is adding new realtors to your business this year? That's a great question. 
Um, I'm probably I'm, I'm probably the guy about 50-50, 50% purchase and 50% refinance. So um, understanding that the refinance business is going to go down is definitely a must, and that's why purchase business is more important than ever. Um, however, I do believe that people, um, a lot of my referrals come from financial planners and CPAs and uh, professional business owners. So um, I know I'll still be continuing working with them and trying to figure out how I can help their clients save money too. No, I love that. All right. So any other last bit of advice for the, the new folks here in the same productivity before I remute you? Just make it happen. Schedule it out on your calendar, live by your calendar, and make it happen. It's worth it. It's a great journey. Oh, yeah, I love I that. I love that. So you see Dave's working on Bliss's stuff right there. That's awesome. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to, um, I guess, add to what you just said. I mean, this program is no doubt amazing. I mean, you know, I've been through a lot of personal development experiences, I've done Tony Robbins. I mean, I've, I've done it. I mean, I won't say I've done it all, but I have done a lot. And, and this program is as good. I think it's, it's the best productivity training I've ever been through or seen. But you've got to do it. You've got to put in the time. You've got to listen to Darren's sessions in a way that you're not multitasking. You're taking notes. Um, you know, these, these sessions that we're doing, these are value adds. So, I mean, this is just like take it or leave it, come or don't. The only thing I would ask if, if you want to get the most value out of this, do take notes. You know, like, like I am ADD, and one of my, what I've just learned about myself is if I type things out, you know, even, even like I'll write things that, you know, it's almost like too much notes, but that's the way I stay engaged is taking notes and writing things. You'll notice I've posted a few quotes and, you know, I've written things in other places. And, you know, of course, I'm also, my job here is to be the host of the party. So, you know, I'm texting people. I'm, you know, answering questions in chat. I'm adding people in Facebook. So I'm, you know, I'm keeping busy because I'm the host of this self-improvement experience. But I, um, you know, I just, I just push everybody. The only way you're not going to get your value out of Darren's program is if you give up or you multi multitask your way through it. You know, if, if you are not present, if you don't go through it, you're not going to get the ROI on your investment. But if you do, I promise you, it'll be the best personal development experience you've ever been through, or among the best personal development experiences. So um, one last thought. I wanted to just shine a light on Bliss. I mean, guys, you know, Utah mortgage expert, you know, bringing you home, you know, I mean, apply now. You just get the feeling like, I know this woman. I trust this woman. Personally, I like this woman. You know, I just think, you know, she's got a team. She's committed. Uh, you can, you know, you can tell the way she's organized her website. You know, it's, it's her. It's, it's, it's authentic. This is the person that I want to do business with. And again, if you're not the person that's attracted to this, you don't want to do business. But she's, she's finding her tribe in that community. So Bliss, I just applaud you because I also know how hard it is to, you know, step outside of the busyness of this mortgage business and, you know, rebrand yourself, tell your story online. Uh, not an easy thing to do. Most mortgage professionals never do really tell their story online or do it the way that you did it. So I, I just want to apply to you and your team again. And thanks for sharing. Uh, by the way, Bliss is muted so she didn't get to say anything, but thanks, Bliss. Uh, Todd, anything you want to add or shine light on before we keep going and bringing in more people? Well, I just think it's something, if we look back when Bliss started talking about that, you know, a few months ago, she mentioned that she was working on it. And so I would, you know, as we, we heard Mark talk about what his vital few are, you know, I think it's important to identify, you know, what are those, those important projects that, that you all want to implement in 2017, whether it's a new CRM or updates to your CRM or a new website or a new marketing campaign. You know, if you're not looking for what that, those items are and really being, you know, super proactive on it and really focused on it and intentional, you know, I don't see that happening, but I, most of us need to do something. And, and I would just say, you know, start with one thing, right? There's, there's so many people, I, I always joke, I've got, you know, boxes of projects that are 80% started and not done. And uh, I would just, uh, you know, crank it out, get, you know, get moving on and think about what those projects are. You know, one of the things that we've, that we've hey, had in the past is... But before yeah. you go off of that, I want to post a question on our Facebook group and see how they answer it. And I'm not sure the way I'm wording it 
is the way you want to ask it. But you know, I, I, we could ask, what are your top three goals for 2017? Or do you want me to say projects? How do you want me to word this question? Because I um, would like to find out where the community is. I definitely think they're two different things, right? So, you know, from a project perspective, you know, the, that may be the right question to ask because, you know, maybe there's two people or three people who want to do a website or launch a CRM, and you know, maybe those people could connect through our community. Um, you know, my gut is, is, is although I know um, Bliss is a marketing genius, that had there been some other person that was that was doing it parallel to her, that that may have been a benefit. So I'm going to ask it this way, guys. Again, remember, you're going to learn about your vital few, those of you that are new, don't know that word yet. Um, you're going to learn this concept that you, know, you, you can't have five big goals. You, what are your top three? But for right now, we're just going to ask this question, what are your top projects? And again, there may be one, there may be two, there may be three. By the way, according to Darren, and I buy it, if you have more than three, you don't have any probably. You've got you to narrow it down to three or less. But what are your top projects for 2017? I uh, have posted that in our Facebook group. Uh, anybody who wants to share, uh, that's what makes our group great, is we're asking great questions together, we're engaging and we're sharing. Uh, hopefully a few of you will answer this question. So I'll throw it back to you, Todd. Sorry for interrupting. I just didn't want to miss that moment. No, that's great. I always, I always love it because I'll tend to start one thought and transition to a second thought. It's great to always put a little, a little exclamation point on the end before we we move on to something, uh, something new. You know, I think it's I think it's key to again remember uh, that there's so much content already in this community. Most time you go up in that search bar, just like Dave mentioned, to find the previous recordings. There's lots of other topics, um, like jam sessions in there, and things that we have uh, talked about. And I definitely would love to see some new faces who are uh, too shy to raise their hand and be heard on this call. I would love to see you uh, throw some comments or questions in there as we continue to go. Um, one thing. Uh, Dave mentioned last week is that you know Darren himself actually does uh, peek in there every now and then as well, and so I think it's just a good I think it's a good opportunity for us to us to keep to keep moving to keep moving in there. Um, you know I kind of feel like like jam sessions is something Dave we should just spend a couple of more, more minutes talking about. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'm good with it. I do want to make sure everyone notices that Michelle Town posted her script in the Facebook page and. Michelle, thank you. I mean, you just always crush it. Uh, so that's a that's a big, cool gift to the community, uh, folks. Grab it, leverage it, honor Michelle, make it better. If you make it better, bring it back. Uh, by the way, before we do wrap up this call, Danny, I would love actually before we do jam session, Todd, if you don't mind, Danny, would you mind telling us how things are going with the move up analysis conversation that we talked about? Um, recently, you know, just give folks an update on how that conversation is going. And also, I think there is a whole jam session to be done around the move up uh, analysis. But Danny, where are you at with that? So I've, I've had about a half dozen meetings around it uh, with agents, and that's really the, been the big focus of this year is getting face to face with agents. Um, and about a half dozen of them have, have evolved to just really talking about the move up strategy. And the the biggest thing about that is that it directly responds to the greatest pain point that the market's feeling right now, which is lack of inventory. And people aren't moving because they don't have a house to go to and, you know, first time homeowners or get, I mean, we had a, a property that we sent a pre-approval letter out on that had eight offers and it ended up going $40,000 over a list uh, at the end of the day. And I mean, that's, that's just crazy to have that kind of movement still happening, um, you know, with, with that. And it's really just a lack of inventory. So sitting down with agents and responding to their biggest pain point is a super, super powerful tool that you can bring. So just to give a, a, a reminder, so the idea is that you can use the total cost analysis to show a family how much wealth they could build by uh, essentially moving up from their current uh, home, selling that place, and then either leveraging the, uh, the accumulated equity that's grown with, in most markets that's a significant amount of money, you know, leveraging the accumulated equity into the next place, or even taking some of that and setting it aside, and then to, to respond to one of the other um, callers talking about how they, they have the you know financial planners and CCAs. I mean, this is a super powerful message to have with, with them as well, and we're working on a strategy to kind of get, get it out to the kind of other channels of business, but so far we've only been um, working on it with realtors, and the response has just been incredible. One, it 
showcases the total cost analysis, which allows you to leverage into uh, another conversation about your, your overall customer experience that you're going to bring to them, uh, what we call the uh, referable, um, oh, shoot, I just blanked on it, <laughs> uh, the, the, the a referable experience essentially, so th that the agents know, oh, this is what my clients are going to experience when I send their you know, when I when I refer them over to the Gaylord Hansen team, they're going to receive a total cost analysis, which is going to focus on advice, which is going to focus on advice around providing value to them, the client, and how it's going to impact them over the long term. And when we have put these together, and 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 I would strongly encourage everybody to just try it out. It's almost the same as a rent versus own analysis, where you can, if you plug in the numbers of rent versus own, I've literally never had a time where renting became the answer for a family. And it's the same here, where if you look at the the move up impact and how they could uh, move up, exp you know, and and another thing that is important, which I um, this I mentioned last time I was on talking about this, was that this it's not just the financial aspect that's that's valuable to these families. So the the net worth accumulation, which is really significant once you pull play out the numbers, is not the real major impact. The major impact is that these families are. They're they're sticking around in their houses longer than their lifestyle pressure is really uh, should. It, it, they're staying longer than they should. So they're you know they're having kids. They're you know they're um, you know moving up in lifestyle where where they you know would have normally been pressured to move out, and they're choosing through through either misinformation or fear or uncertainty to stick around, and they're missing a huge opportunity. So uh, I mean basically every every facet of this is just super super powerful when you when you bring it out and start showcasing it. Yeah, so, so folks, by the way, you'll notice on January 20th, so it's a few posts down, Danny had posted his move-up analysis. And, and we're, we're talking about this on all these calls. And if you want to really listen to the conversation last week, you can listen to the recording. It will be a strategy that I think will be trending for a while. I mean, in the mortgage coach community, the move-up analysis is, is you know, the, the purchase options is by far the most common scenario created in the mortgage coach community network, but the move up analysis is trending and a lot of the smartest mortgage coaches are doing that because, you know, let's face it, if you could help an agent double into property, you like not double into but get two transactions, they get a listing and they get a new buyer, they love you. You know, so for Michelle Town, I mean that's you know, your wheelhouse. The more you give, the more you get. And the move up analysis really helps a family net it out. You know, should you be moving up? And remember, the idea is not to sell people on moving up. The idea is to say, hey, I don't know if it's right for you or not, but would you like us to help, you know, net out what the, you know, the wealth benefits would be, what your net worth difference would be in five years and 10 years in moving up? And if the numbers, based on their beliefs of values and rates, if it nets out, you serve the family, you serve your agent, everybody wins. So uh, we'll be talking about that more. Um, right now, I would tell everyone, you know, schedule a jam session. If you don't know how to create a move up analysis and mortgage coach, it's part of why I partnered with Darren, you know, because I believed uh, insane productivity would make you a better mortgage coach and it would make you more efficient, more effective. So schedule a jam session this week and learn how to do it. And if you already know how to do it, schedule a jam session to turn it into a value proposition that you take to your agents. Uh, Todd, I'm going to let you wrap it up for the next seven minutes because I've done all the talking for the past five or so. Uh, so I'll let you close out the call and I'll just put it on mute and it's yours from here. All right, so let's uh, let's let's kind of put a bow on on this time together and, and let's set some some action plans. I think the the big key is I'm continuing to see some people posting here. Um, thanks, Ed. I don't know if it's by Ed or Edward has posted what his commitments are. Anyone else who wants to post in there? Um, commitments and share with a group of of what you're going after. I think that would be great. And one of his is to complete and implement insane productivity, which certainly should be on all of our action plans, right, as an ongoing piece. And so, um, you know, let's just go off with what Dave said. Let's let's make sure everyone who's new, who hasn't done any jam sessions yet, um, or anyone who's returning who's been struggling with them, make a commitment this week to schedule minimum of one. Um, you heard you heard people talk, Dave said 20 minutes is where he started. He's up to 45. Um, we heard uh, Troy talking about that his are at 60 minutes. And, you know, that's a that's a pretty good place to, to shoot for. Um, but remember, you've got to be working, looking forward with blinders on, right? That During that time, you're not answering your phone. You're not answering texts. You're not checking your email. 
If you have to send emails, the strategy there is to actually be in your outbox because then you're not seeing what's coming in. And you just have to turn off those notifications, right? It's the, the notifications that seem to be the distraction, at least for me and, and most other people that I talk to or coach. And it's just all those little things that pop up on your phone. And I, and I kid you not, there's nothing on my phone that comes up anymore with the exception of a text message because having teenage daughters and two of them at our college, you know, that's the way I know that if it's urgent that they're going to reach out to me. And so I would just encourage you all to look at what is it that what's interrupting your life so that when you do a jam session, you can limit those interruptions. Because in the end, we're all human, and the more interruptions we have, the harder it's going to be to ignore those distractions. The other piece I would be looking at is, is what are those big projects for next year? Jump into the Facebook community, um, address what your big projects are, because I do think that there's an opportunity for you to find somebody else in this community who has a big project that's similar to yours that you can reach out to you through Facebook and connect offline and try to come up with some ways to synergize that and you know, have it have it work for the two of you. I think that's the key with this industry is that, you know, there's there's not too many brand new crazy ideas that no one's going to be willing to share, right? Danny just took time and he shared with you the move up strategy and how it's working. Uh, Michelle just gave us her script, right? I mean, that's huge. And so when you think about what people in this community are sharing, you know, the, the idea is to, you know, the whole idea of swipe and adapt, right? When it comes to an idea like what Danny's doing and what, and what Dave's put out there in the mortgage coach community, right? We all need something to call a realtor and say, right? And you may not be the person who feels comfortable with Michelle's script of talking about funerals and, and that, you know, that may not be your thing. So you might be checked out on that part. But then maybe you hear Danny talk about, you know, doing this move up analysis and how that may be something that you can kind of get your arms around. Because ultimately, you've got to overcome that that fear reluctance, right? If you That call reluctance, that fear that Michelle talked about at the beginning of the call. Mm -hmm if you're really going to go out there and, and prospect. And, you know, Mark was honest enough to share with us his his 50-50 refis versus purchases. And, you know, I've, I've had some offline conversations with Mark. And, you know, my gut is if we talk about it, that Mark's not going to tell you his goal is just to do 50% of the business next year. That's why he said he's got over 10 hours a week that his goal is, is to prospect. Um, and so um, Jeff also said the same thing. He's at about 50-50. And, you know, those of you who have, huge refi pipeline from last year to overcome are going to have to be super focused on jam sessions, super fo focused on prospecting. And, you know, you, you probably don't want to have just one or two meetings, you know, this week. You know, you probably need to have one or two meetings a day or maybe even double that in a day in order to get there. And so I'm throwing a lot out there because I want you all to be thinking about what it is that you can do. Um, my encouragement would be that once you hang up off this call in a few minutes, that, that you do a jam session for the next 60 minutes. There's actually no better time to do it. Now, of course, some of you are thinking, well, wait, I haven't checked my email in 60 minutes. And I would say that's, that's okay. Um, you know, I believe, that, I believe that they will wait for you. Um, Danny actually said it. I, I, I typed it down. People will wait for value. So, again, the right relationships aren't going to care that you actually waited an extra 60 minutes to get back to them. And I promise you, you'll get far further in 2017 by actually blocking out that time for the next 60 minutes. Um, go back to Michelle's script for a minute, right? That you have that idea that you want to, you just want to memorize, right? Memorize the parts that you like first, um, and then you're going to customize it to you, and then you're going to internalize it. And again, it's just kind of thinking through the process of how will you use a script like that. Um, you know, for me in the old days, literally, I'd cut and paste that out of Facebook. Um, I'd print it out. I'd go through. I'd, I'd make the changes in it that I want, and then, you know, I, I wasn't really much of a rehearser. I would do my best to use it with a person live on the phone and do it without trying to make it sound like I was actually reading it. Um, probably different levels of success each time, but ultimately I believe um, that most of you could do that could do that same thing. And so, you know, I think kind of as we get ready to launch into next week, right, again, a lot of you are going to be in, you know, weeks two, three, and four when we get on the phone next time. And so we will spend a little bit of time reviewing really what I see as the key takeaways that we discussed over and over and over again on those last 19 calls. Um, but all of you returners, right, we need you guys in here, right? Really appreciative of all the feedback that we continue to get from all of you. And so just know we're going to continue to bring in some new ideas. Um, I love talking about prospecting ideas. I'd love it if a couple of you would come back next week maybe and share either your experience with what Michelle or Danny taught us today or maybe maybe share something new with us. That would be great. Um, just know we're going to continue to uh, to be here every Friday, and we're going to continue to make this a great call. So. Um, I guess with that, I'll wrap it up. Dave, any last words from you before we let everyone go on and, and get jamming? 
No, hey, I appreciate everybody who um, came. You engaged. You learned. You got better. Uh, you know, Danny and Michelle, big, huge thank you to both of you for being leaders on the call. Michelle, thank you for this script. Uh, Danny would love to get a script from you sometime over the next couple weeks, maybe a script on the move up, or even just record it. If you record it and send it to me, I'll have it transcribed. But, uh, you know, both of you, with the kind of production that you do and the kind of success that you have, your scripts mean a lot to the mortgage coach community. And then, folks, you know, we're looking for more leaders. Best way to lead is to ask great questions and share great stories. So please come to these calls prepared to be a leader. That means share an idea, ask a great question. If you raise your hand, Todd and I will always make sure that we call on you. And if you post a question in um, the question area, I'm just making sure no one's got their hand raised, so no one's got their hand raised, and I don't see a question that we haven't answered. So know that you have a place that you can come every Friday share stories, hear stories, and ask questions. I did post um, the question that we asked, what are your top three projects for 2017? That has been pinned to the top, so I'll keep it pinned to the top for a few days. Uh, Nicole Francis, thank you for engaging. Uh, hopefully the way you answered that was valuable for you and will also be valuable for other folks on this call. And like I said, I hope um, other folks will engage until then, um, rock it out. Make sure you do your insane productivity um, homework between now and next Friday. And uh, Todd, are you going to be able to be here next Friday? Do you know if you're um, you have a conflict or not? That's a that's a great thing. My, I'm about 99% certain that at this time I will be speaking to our master's coach uh, friends there. So unfortunately, no, I no think uh, you no. guys are all going to run run the play without me next week. Okay, so Todd won't be here, and Danny, and Michelle, I'm not going to put you on the spot. But if one of you could be here, great. Just text me and let me know whether you can. And until then, have a good one, everybody. All right, all. Take care. Ciao.